Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to turn a light bulb with PuckJS. First you need to install the NRF Connect app, then you just need to scan for devices and connect your light bulb. It's usually quite easy to find out which one's which. I mean this one has a model number of SMLC9 and there's a device here called SMLC9. So if we click connect we'll um, see a list of services that this light bulb provides. Now we just want to um, go down these, expand them, and look at all the ones that say read and write by them. And then you basically want to look at them, click that value to read the value and just make a note of it. Then use the app that came with the light bulb, turn the light bulb on, and read them again and see if any have changed and what they changed to. So I've done this before because it's a bit of a lengthy process, but um, I discovered that this first one here changes and this turns the light on and off. And there are other ones that change the, the color of it and other things. But um, this one, if I choose uint8 and write a 1 to it, it will turn it on. And if I do the same thing, change uint8 and turn it off with the 0. So um, that's really nice and easy. To make this work in PuckJS, you basically need to take that UUID and that UUID and the two values you used um, to turn it off and turn it on. And then we can copy that and perform it in PuckJS. The other thing you might also want to make a note of is the specific address here. Now you could access um, any different light bulb of this make using those um, service UUIDs. But to make it easy, you probably just want to control this one light bulb and you want that address that's up there. Now we've got the characteristic, all we have to do is control it using PuckJS. So I've already connected with the web IDE here. Now, we could use the graphical editor um, and we could, we could use Bluetooth functions here, but we're just going to do it using code. If you go to the Esfino reference page, under nrf.connect, there's a little bit of example code for um, sending a command to another Puck device. So we'll just lift that and we'll change it. So if we put that in our code, um, we know what the service and characteristic should be, so let's change those. And we also know what the address of the... Um, of the device we're connecting to should be, so we'll change that as well. So finally, um, we were sending a string because we were sending it to another Esprino, but actually all we care about is sending a 1 or a 0, like we did in the NRF Connect app. So if I send that now, it should turn the light on. And if I um, send a 0, it should turn it off. Now obviously we don't want to upload code each time, so we can turn this into a function. So let's um, define a function called setLight and call it isOn. And we'll just use a ternary operator here so that if isOn is true, then we'll make it a 1, otherwise we'll make it a 0. And that should do us. If we upload that, we'll now have a function called setLight. And if we say setLight true or 1 or whatever, it will turn the light on. And if you do the same with zero, it will turn it off. Now, the flickering that you're seeing is actually because of the webcam. It's not like that in real life. Now, once we've got that, it would be nice to be able to do it from the button. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to use something called setWatch. Um, this will call the function that you supply when the button is pressed. So we just want to say it's when the button is pressed. We want to make sure it happens all the time. And we want to happen when the button is pressed rather than when it's released. And also we want to make sure that um, it doesn't accidentally get multiple presses when you press it. So now we'll have a variable called on and we'll make this toggle state whenever the button is pressed. So let's say on is not on and we'll say set light on. So if I upload this now when I press the button, we should see that um, the light will light soon after. And if I press it again, the light will turn off. So you can now completely disconnect the Web IDE and it will work as a standalone button. That's exactly what I used in the demo right at the beginning. You could do lots of other things with this. You could, for instance, um, instead of using button, you could use an external input and make it light the light up based on a motion sensor. Or you could use a magnetometer and detect when a door is open. 
So there's lots of flexibility here. If you like this, please subscribe. Um, I'm going to be putting up a whole load more videos like this in the future, um, showing how to make all kinds of cool stuff using Esprino. Thanks for watching.